the best short films for lifelong learning, recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love, with your host, Richard Lee. Let's get on to the first film that you've recommended, The Unspoken. My dad's 83, and he has terminal lung cancer. Dad, this film is all the things I need you to hear. I've got to admit, I always looked at you as being completely indestructible, mate. I mean, there's nothing you weren't able to build or fix or solve. Yeah. The students that I, you know, that I work with, they all have a story a bit like that in some capacity. So often after I show it to the students, the comments are, oh, you know, he reminds me of my grandfather or sometimes even great-grandfather. And, oh, it's so sad and, oh, he seems like he's such a lovely man and isn't his son so wonderful for doing that, you know, in making a film about his father. And um, that's the nice comments that you like to hear from students. Mm. And just what I mentioned earlier about that connection with Australia, the, that, that Australian accent that comes through from the sun, the students... They do connect with it, mm. I think, mm. when it is a story that could be around the corner from them mm. um, in their own suburbs. Mm. So that's that's why I've chosen it. That's why I chose it to um, to mm. talk about. Yeah, yeah. I had that warm response to it. I thought it was a very warm film, a very sweet film. But also, when the credits came up and said, it said this was dedicated to families living with terminal cancer. On the one hand, I was touched that this personal sentiment was being shared with others. He was sort of moving that outwards and sharing it, inspiring others to express their, you know, unspoken joy towards those they love. Really, really inspiring. But a more cynical part of me started to wonder, was this just a marketing exercise for Treehouse Creative? (laughs) I mean, it's professionally produced. He's a professional filmmaker. Oh, I didn't think of that way. No, and I'm I'm sorry to go there. I hate to think (laughs) of that. but I know. I hate being that cynical because I think we do need to make positive stories. But I I think it's worth some time. And and maybe it's an opportunity to talk to students about why do you think he did it publicly? Let's move on to the second film, Cargo. The narrative structure is, is, is um, one of the things that I like about Cargo, that it has that clear orientation, complication, climax, and then it's resolved. It's not resolved. Things aren't always resolved well when it comes to resolutions of, of short stories, essentially, or short films. Uh, the other reason I chose it is because, you know, these, these the teenagers I work with, they go through, over the years, they've gone through these phases of things that are the hot topic. and. Once upon a time it was the aliens and then it became the vampires and at the moment the zombies certainly are what people like to talk about with shows like The Walking Dead as an example. So in those, those after the car crash ha- happens and there's a bit of disarray and as soon as we see the, the mother and the, she's a zombie, the kids, you get them, they're sucked into it. They want to know what's going to happen now with this zombie story. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was clever. So it was definitely well timed, I think, from 2013. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in the throes of, of, of zombie mayhem mm. um, on our TV screens. Mm. So the narrative structure was really important. Um, and I do that with the students to, when they are making short films, they, they don't know where to start. You know, what am I going to make my short film about? And I always bring my students back to basic narrative structure. Let's orientate ourselves with some characters. There has to be some type of a complication. The story needs to climax and that it should resolve in some way. And and what year level do you use that with? So how old are your students? Yeah, I use that with um, usually year 10s and year 11s. That's kind of the age. That's about 15, 16 years of age. Uh, one of the things about trot fests, if, you, if you've seen many of them, you've got to watch the, some of the language that's used. So I've obviously got to move away from some some films that don't use some um, appropriate language for the year level. But 
cargo is fine. Um, there's only a little bit of blood and guts. The kids are okay with that. Uh, so yeah, about year ten or eleven generally. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the last film. Um, you are so dead. Most of whom seek out other members of their species, knowing there is safety and strength in numbers. They move about in herds, generally minding their own business and keeping out of each other's ways. On the edge of these packs, there are harmless, docile creatures who belong to no herd in particular and are easy pickings for the cold-blooded killers that lurk in the shadows. My name is Sharon Burns. I've never had a herd. I've always been a target. You're so dead. (laughs) When my students are making their films for media, often the setting for the films um, is, is school. So by showing them a film that was made at a school, they think, oh, it's accessible to them. Yes. So they start to trigger ideas about a film that they can make just simply because of the setting. Um, yeah, obviously the, um, the, the storyline of, of, you know, trying to kill someone um, <laughs> isn't something that I'm <laughs> promoting amongst the student body. Of course not. But they like the idea of um, they can identify with the characters as well and it starts with that line, high school is a jungle. And it is. And all of a sudden the students sit back and think, ooh, now this is actually speaking to me, this film, a little bit. And as they go through the different um, groups and they talk about the, you know, the way they're represented and the stereotypes associated with um, the misfits and the nerds and the, and the bullies or whatever it happens to be, mm-hmm. and they can think, oh, yeah, that, I probably fit into that group or you might fit into that group. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm always a big fan of a, a film that starts a discussion. Do you think do you, you would teach other subjects as well? So I'm just I'm curious to know how, say, a, uh, an English teacher or someone talking about psychology or, you know, someone beyond just using this as media analysis, do you think this film has a place in other subject areas as well? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we, um, HPE, um, they have a, a week around uh, mental illness, physical health, all those types of things. And um, the students who do that in year 10, it becomes a whole cohort. So the entire year 10 population, and in my school that's 160 students, all have to do something for HPE week to, to, to build awareness around healthy, well-being, good lifestyles, etc. And students do gravitate to film. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share your uh, films that you love and the insights about how you use them in the classroom. It's really useful. To listen to the full conversation, go to the audio version on SoundCloud or iTunes. To get more ideas for your teaching, join our new Facebook group today. All links in the notes below.